Okay, you filming? Yeah. This thing thinking, ah, oh, it's not going according to plan. We're here. Uh, we are here in sunny or not so sunny Flandid now. We're going to do a bit of scouting round, trying to find uh, a nice place to paint somewhere with a nice composition. Obviously, uh, because this is a seaside resort, we've got uh, you know the sea, which is always a lovely thing to paint. There's the pier over there, which hopefully we might you know find some really nice compositions. I like the way these houses kind of curl round. Um, but what I'm looking for is for maybe the sun to come out to provide me with a, with a bit of light and shadow. Um, you know, if we look over there, we can see the little orm and that's kind of lit up uh, by the sun a little bit. The cloud can be quite good because it means that I'm not going to be chasing the shadows around all day because it's when, it's when it's very sunny, the shadows move very quickly. So plein air painting can be quite difficult. So I'm looking for a focal point for the painting. Uh, every painting has, or every good painting I should say, has a focal point which is where the person who's looking at the, the painting, that's where their eye is drawn. It doesn't have to be anything incredibly interesting, just something in the painting, whether it's the shine on a car, whether it's you know something like this, which is a point of interest. Uh, we just need to find that focal point. We're looking at these clouds now and uh, the rain could become an issue. Luckily, uh, we've come prepared. I've got two different types of oil paint. I've got a water soluble oil paint, which I love to use in dry conditions, but obviously the rain will affect that uh, because it is water soluble. It's manipulated by water. But if not, and if it really pours down, uh, I'm just gonna use oil paints. And oil paints aren't gonna be affected by water. I'm hoping, I've never tried it, really before in weather like this but i'm hoping that it's not going to affect my ability to get a good painting either way we're going to head towards the pier because i'm pretty sure they sell ponchos on the pier so um the reason we look really really cool is because we uh, both of us, by the way, not just me, my cameraman James, he also has a poncho on. Uh, and it says, I got soaked in Wales. Oh. We're still looking for a location. Uh, we're on the pier now. It's really lovely. We're waiting for the rain to subside a little bit. Uh, but the advantage of rain in this impressionist style um, is that it gives us reflections which are going to increase the realism in the painting because we get to paint those reflections there. Things like that bench over there uh, where, you know, th there's the actual bench to paint, but then uh, just a bit of shadow, just a little bit of kind of delicate uh, reflection underneath is going to really make it look cool. Right. Just be my friend. Over there is the little arm. I'm pretty sure it's called the Little Orm. Maybe the lesser or I, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, it's kind of, to me, it looks blue um, because I'm seeing it as a painting. It's called atmospheric perspective. And the further back you get, certain colors like reds and yellows start to drop out and you're left with blues over there. And that's how to create depth in a painting. So we're going to go up to the Great Orm over there. Um, it's going to be really windy, so it's a good test for the microphone with this flapping about. See whether we can find any more kind of locations and uh, maybe see the seals. Okay, so 
We're nearing ish the top of the Great Orm. Um, we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk up there, right to the very top of the Great Orm. Yeah, no, no, it's too far. <laughs> so this is what we're painting. We've chosen this side of Slim Didno uh, rather than the side over there that's the, you know, the more famous side. This side deserves attention too, in my opinion. We've got a little arm over there, which is going to be a nice little thing to paint in the background. We've got that atmospheric perspective because the buildings go really far back and almost kind of disappear into a little focal point. Um, my focal point is going to be these buildings here when we get a bit closer up and the nice steps there where we've got the contrast between colours. Um, so let's see how it goes. I've got a, a little filbert brush here. Um, this is to start my sketching in, which is gonna be the first part of the process. So we're gonna do that now. So I prepped my canvas with an, an acrylic wash. So just some acrylic paints I had lying at home, which is ultramarine blue and uh, some burnt sienna. And the reason that I've done this is because it makes it much easier to match colors. If you have a white canvas, sometimes you're inclined to think that the clouds over there are as white as the canvas is, but that it's never true. The white canvas is whiter than anything needs to be normally. So we have to bring it down and it's much easier to do with this kind of mid-tone we're working with. And it's an earthy color because it's, it's you know, I want it to be a kind of a natural looking painting. So at this point, it's just minimal detail. I'm just getting in the bare bones of the structure of what I can see here, because there's no detail important at the minute. The next stage is still gonna be no details when I'm gonna be blocking in lights and dark colors. So we'll see how this goes. There we are, the sun is coming out now, which means that I've got to, you know, whatever shadows are around at the time of me painting, I've got to try and capture them quickly in the painting because otherwise they're going to disappear as I'm painting and it makes it really difficult. You've got to keep, you know, painting different shadows. So I'll block in all the shadow work and then I have to kind of do it from memory afterwards. I can feel myself doing this already, which is something you really need to avoid when painting, is make sure you've got a lot of paint on your brush, which I haven't at the minute. It's something that I think people try and be delicate and they try to go, uh, you know, like, I'll just paint, a you know, if I don't have loads of paint on my brush, then I'm not gonna make too much of a mistake. You can always paint back over stuff again. Have loads of paint on your brush. It's going quite well at the minute. Um, I'm getting a bit hungry. I guess we're about an hour into the painting, so I think, uh, I think it's James's job to go and get me some chips.
So I've got most of it there on the canvas. Now it's a case of pushing paint back and forth, but also now to add some tiny low lights. So the darker bits in the distance I can add with a small brush. And then I'm also gonna do the same with my lightest lights now. Actually, I think I've been, been being very hard on myself for this thing, thinking, ah, oh, it's not going according to plan. But it actually is. I'm gonna look at it. It always tends to be the way, though. Right, it's a bit of red in there. Nice big swoop. A white. Yeah. Yeah. So, bits of the lightest light now, just to finish this thing off. Ah. Oh. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> well, thank you very much. No Cheers. So I will see, I'll see myself on YouTube. You see I? yourself on YouTube, yeah, it'll be... Yeah. <laughs> There we go. It's a painting. <laughs> so it's been done. Um, I enjoyed it. I've absolutely loved painting it. Loved visiting uh, Slandidno. Uh, incidentally, I've used a posh hard box here, which just, it's something that helps people get out and paint. You know, you can take it out into the wilderness or you can take it out into a city or wherever you want to paint. And I really, really enjoyed using it. Uh, <coughs> so, that, that's about it you know we've loved to come in here we want to go to other places um, maybe like maybe comment and suggest where you'd like us to go uh, yeah that's about it bye <laughs>